Welcome everyone back to Excellency Heavy League. I am Necronx joining you on the probably the final week here. I mean, unless some miracle rains down from God and, and Bucky's get another shot at a miracle run, this is last time, at least in the regular season, that we are going to bring you this show. And I got the greatest team around me here, ready to break down the all-star teams throughout the regular season. Boys, thoughts on, on the votes that we got in so far? It's looking real spicy. Yeah, I mean, this is the first team, um, I believe, if I remember correctly. Um, so, I oh, know, third three. team. This third team, yeah. This third right. team on screen. So, we're counting up. Uh, yeah, this one, I, I, th I think the votes all around are pretty crazy. I think I kind of threw some curveballs in there. But overall, I think we pretty well encapsulated uh, the league as we've you know seen so far. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think I agree with you. You know, the, you, you see a lot of interesting stuff in here. I think it's interesting Blazing Bronze made his way onto the list. Uh, not that he's a bad player by any means, but it, it's just that you had the top 280 carries, and then you get to everybody else, sort of, uh, just like the, 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 the dog pack of all the players in the 80 carry role. And, yeah, I guess Blazing Bronze kind of rose to the top in, in that sort of situation. What really shocks me here and what I highly disagree with here is that Giga is on Team 3. I feel like Giga has been the most consistently dominant top laner in the entire league. I love Clonk. I love me some Clonk, but let's be real. Giga has been a beast. Uh, yeah, I, I do think he's going to be some, before I go any further, I, I do want to thank, of course, Dunsey, um, for, for putting together yeah. the list of, of all the, um, votes from the teams, because, you know, you know, as much as we do study this league and, and as players, you know, I think we've seen what 30, 32 matches together between the two of us over eight weeks. So, uh, it is feel, it feels a lot nicer to have the, the player's perspective because you guys all do play each other twice. And so I really do appreciate that we, we uh, we have a, a good amount of of perspective here around these players, and a couple of points that I do want to make about Team Three is I, I you know I talked to a couple of players, I talked to a couple of coaches, and I think there's a, a good consensus that Blazing Bronze uh, has performed very well. His, his stats are pretty solid as well. He's in the top four uh, in pretty much every major stat uh, that that teams follow for AD carry performance across the league, and he is very often asked to be New Age's late game win condition as they do sort of have their, you know, level two, level three shenanigans across the map uh, and, and has put out a, a lot of good statistics, uh, you know, alongside two different supports. So I think he has really made, uh, you know, a, a good name for himself. The one that I uh, disagreed with a little bit on this list uh, was uh, Kiwiism, although the, in my opinion, I think the support pool is the deepest in the entire league, which is why it made it very difficult for, for me to select. You know, I had uh birdman and trivia boy ahead of kiwiism yeah. uh but between kiwiism and toy for example and even i think chaser uh, alongside blazing bronze in the latter half of the season um i think they've been very very good uh, and i think we have a lot of very good supports in this league um that that do a lot of good things that have a lot of good vision and so picking team three for me for particular for for support was super super hard i think support yeah. in general across the board was super hard i mean all their stats are relatively close together. Um, so when you look at it from like that standpoint, it's incredibly difficult to kind of differentiate. So you kind of go with like player feel. Um, I'm going to kind of out myself here and say that three of my members of this, you know, third team here, I actually placed on the first team. Uh, I, I think huh? statistically they're much better than where they're being placed right now. Personally, I took a step back from the stats page. I glanced over it briefly, looking at, you know, who's got uh, the numbers to back up uh, the talk and the walk. But uh, I'm really just going off of a player field, like you said. I'm just straight on how I look at these players, their impact on the match. And well, we've had a little bit of discussion here, there, uh, you know, bot lane, top lane. Honestly, the biggest shocker to me is LZ. LZ came in halfway through the split for Lotus. Uh, just randomly in the league, came in, <laughs> popped off on some carries. Then we got to see a Mumu, uh, so so has had a huge diversity of pools, and then uh, getting really nice stats to boot as well. Uh, you know, 2.8 KDA, excuse me, 10.5 uh, uh, kill assist average. So it's uh, really really nice uh, to me personally yeah, to see LZ up there. Yeah, I do think LZ has been decent. I, I will say. Uh, in contract, you know, contrary in opinion here to the support pool, I think the jungle pool is the the weakest in our league, um, yeah. or at least performance yeah. wise. You know, I, I had a clear top two, and outside of that, I had basically nothing. Um, you know, I think there are 
very clear strengths and weaknesses to all of the junglers. Uh, and that made it very hard for me to select a third team because I don't think a lot of people perform to their best of their ability throughout the entire season. You look back at the VODs, you look at the match reviews, whatever we have available to us. And, and it was a lot harder for me uh, to pick tier three, which is I think why LZ sneaks in there, even only playing half a season. Uh, because you know, even if you look at, I think the closest one for me was Rosero, uh, there just weren't enough convincing stats. And, and the fact is he gets a lot of help from Birdman uh, in the early start parts of the game, um, you know, setting up vision, roaming all over the place, uh, just trying to be basically an, an early setup um, you know, player alongside that jungler. So it, it did make it a little bit tricky, but I, I think outside of our top two junglers, there's a huge drop off. Real quick, the it, one stat that for who LZ. Voted array? Who voted Array? I just got uh, asked. Not me. I had <laughs> Array. I had Array fourth, honestly. Uh, on I had Array list. third. Third, man. Run, what? stun, job, well done, Array. I love it. I, yeah. I'm, I'm there every day. He, 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 he is certainly my honorable mention in that I, I think his early game is insane. I think if you take Array in the first 15 minutes of a game, he's probably in the in top three for sure. And then yeah. you take him post 20 and it's like he's it's like he's cinderella like you know pre <laughs> pre midnight pre 20 minutes pre, pre that clock hits dude's insane he's gorgeous he's beautiful he's everything you want in a jungler post 20 minutes everything falls apart the spell comes undone the brain goes away and we have a completely different array yeah i i, I agree and you know it's sad to see that array up here but the rest of them looking good profit in the mid lane as well holding your own i don't think anyone could disagree with that but let's look at our team two here we got dust to dawn all the way down to birdman in our second all pro team thoughts on this one i think i think these are more reasonable to me at least who has who has palm goat on team two uh me me uh everybody <laughs> oh I had, I had him on first yep. team. He's just, he's just statistically the best. I'm sorry. Um, I think the stats sort of lie in, in this scenario in the sense that Palm Goat is extremely good at, at his champions. But if you look back at his games, he plays a lot of supportive uh, AD carries. And he plays them extremely well. Uh, but I think the role that he he plays uh, for for uh, excuse me for wild boomers is is not quite the role that alistair does where particularly for the first half of the season when i think they were struggling with team coordination he was the carry and the only one for lotus and sort of has been all season palm goat is asked a lot more to support Rosero and birdman in the early game and then be a reliable team fighter but i think the true team fight carry for wild boomers is likely trinity uh, you know, typically scales yep. up a little bit higher and, and is the main member in team fights. And so I think just from that sense, and I think the community sense is that Alistair is is just a more reliable carry player for his team than Palm Goat is. But I do agree with you that Palm Goat stats have been nuts this season. I just think those get taken a little out of context based on the style of the teams. All right. Wait. Well, I want to kind of shift focus over to is baby powder being on the second tier here yeah. look jimmy is an amazing jungler and i give him all the props in the world i mean definitely a top two uh but he's top two baby powder has been like the only jungler who hasn't had a performance this split where you were like what are you doing uh, i'm sorry uh baby powder he's like he's not only been very talented the entire time he's also been very consistent Something that the junglers as a whole have really struggled with. So I think the fact that Baby Power didn't get onto the first team is a little criminal. I'm not going to make any allegations or arrests <laughs> or throw any warrants. I uh, had Jimmy on team too, so don't look at me. Yeah, me and Doctor. Look, Doctor don't get a lot right, but he nailed this one. And don't forget, we have 50% of the vote coming from the player base. So you do have yeah. to keep that in mind uh, when you do do this. I did have Jimmy on first team. Um, you know, I asked a couple coaches what they look for in, in jungler statistics. And I, I think Jimmy had, you know, highest kills, uh, highest amount of, of Rift Herald control, uh, which gives me a lot of, um, you know, makes me think that the VBO plays towards their top side a lot. Jimmy and Dust to Dawn are their win conditions. And if they are dominating the map like they are and, and controlling early objectives, particularly top side, they're doing their job. And whenever I have seen VBO winning games and looking at their best, particularly since Dusk did arrive into the lineup, it is with those two carrying with the help of Profit, which is actually why I had Profit on my second team because I think he's critical to that that function. Uh, but I, for me, I think Jimmy does is asked to do and does a little bit more for his team than Baby Powder does. But they are clearly, in my in my case, sort of S-tier junglers in our league. And it's just, you know, where do you have them one to? I mean, Jimmy definitely does get carried quite a bit by Hecarim, though. I think we do need <laughs> to put that asterisk there before we say anything further. 
Yeah, no, he rides that pony all the way to the finish line in most of his games. Uh, I, I, once he gets that pick banned away, I'm honestly, I'm going to be not suspect of him, but just wondering. There's just going to be that eyebrow raise like, can you do anything else? Udyr's not here anymore, buddy. Did you no. did, did you see he had three games with 10 or more kills on Lee Sin? That's a, I, I don't want that to talk one. about Lee Sin. I don't that, that, that doesn't count. We don't look at that one. I, I do want to, though, just point at the discrepancy that you guys are getting at between Baby Powder and the rest of these second tier players. Baby Powder has nearly a 9.0 KDA. Dust to Dawn in the top lane, he's got three. Like, Baby Powder's on another level, but I, I don't know. Personally, I put him at two uh, just because Jimmy is such a critical part of VBO. The solo laners in VBO are very, very good. Um, but Jimmy, man, he sets them up so, so well. Uh, the only one that I think is criminal in this list, as Doctor is referencing, is Birdman. I think Bird is so, so good and so impactful in Wyo that it's shocking to me that he's not first. I will say, I will say, wow. Birdman is Wyo's best player, and that's why they're yeah. fourth right now is because mm -hmm. Birdman's their best player. That's not necessarily a diss, but it, that also isn't like, you know, this guy's carrying them to the pinnacle of Heavy League. It's more like, ah, uh, he's good enough to get this whole squad into fourth, right? They're not necessarily going to be the favorites heading at the playoffs or anything like that. And honestly, I think having three Wild Boomer players on second team, that to me means that this is, should probably be the second place team. They are not the second place team. Fair uh, enough. Yeah, no, I mean, okay. there, there's an argument to be had there. I mean, we are yeah. only a certain portion of the vote, bear in mind. So, you know, what we kind of say, kind of, I feel like it got drowned out a little bit because I think, I honestly think that if it had been just us, you know, five broadcast members here, <laughs> we'd honestly have a very different, you know, I set of so three too, teams. Probably. I think yeah. that they're, they're quite, I think we're just outnumbered, realistically. I think there's so many <laughs> back more players. Back boys, than these us. players, man. They see Birdman showing up in their lanes and like, what the hell is this? <laughs> Why is he top lane at four minutes? Yeah. yeah. I, we gotta go. We gotta move on to first team here. This is really where things. Uh, you see the peak of the mountain. Look at these beautiful members. You got Clonk in here, Juice Box guy. I know you're feeling happy. I love Clonk. Are you though? I I think Clonk's a great top laner. I don't think he's the first or second <laughs> best top laner, though. Uh, I, I I think he's got the best personality in the entire league. He's super fun to uh, talk to and, and to mess around with. We've said some strange things to each other in private conversation. Well, but, well, okay. But uh, <laughs> I, I think the fact he's up here is, it, on one of the teams is great. He definitely deserves to be. I think Giga should have the first spot, though. Uh, Clonk is Good awesome. <laughs> Yeah, me and Doctor, we're actually kind of aligning on a lot of this right now. Pause two, I'm cool with that. Uh, Trivia yeah. Boy, I do think is the best support in the league. Birdman, maybe you could argue, but I, I personally don't think so. Uh, Kiwi, I didn't say Kiwi, but uh, I don't know. I, other than that, uh, other than Clonk, who I love, eh, all of this, I'm pretty okay with outside of that Jimmy point, which I, you know, I think he still belongs in the top two. Yeah, so this this is an interesting one, and, and I think the biggest takeaway that that I have from all of this is so number one, you know, Glaive sort of dominated the 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 regular season, and so it's no surprise to see at least three members uh, in, in the first team. Uh, Clonk, I think, does not get enough praise. Um, I think it, it's sort of funny that I can't remember the name of the chatter in the games that we were casting when you he and uh, and Juicebox were sort of having their their Clonk off, uh, but the 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 quote used was that that you know glaive has no weak side and i think that is sort of true which is why clonk got my vote for first team uh because he does play a lot of weak side for this team uh it allows baby powder to sort of uh, you know power farm up through yeah. the jungle support mid lane and he does it exceptionally the man's deaths are second in the league in top lane only to giga who dies like uh, to me an inordinately low amount like giga is like unkillable the man's like point three or four like he just doesn't die per game like his deaths per game are like one or something like that it's crazy like it's so the much highest kda of any top laner if yeah he's got like 10 like... but that yeah. that almost makes me like sus a little bit of like how he's playing because right like his every top bad like every 
Right, and like every top laner should be expecting to like die probably a couple times a game, particularly when you play weak side champions, right? And so it makes me wonder like how involved is is you know are you getting or are you coordinated with your team or is that a team decision? Clonk is a weak side player and doesn't often get a lot of resources from his team and doesn't die even nearly as much as the rest of the league. He's very very skilled. He you know he plays two v one situations extremely well. His wave management's excellent. The man is is a rock. Uh, for this team he scales up and he's always there for team fighting and the big thing that that you know changes for me between him and Dusted Dawn is we've only seen half a season from Dusted Dawn so yeah. as much as I think he is a, a carry you know a carry potential for VBO and could prove himself in playoffs uh, I, I think I have to hand it to Klong for the consistency uh, of being that rock in the top lane across the entire season you sold me Klong first first team <laughs> so <laughs> you're right um, so so something that yeah. I noticed uh, when I was looking at those things, because I, I did take a very statistical approach to how I was, you know, picking my players here. Uh, when you compare pound for pound the Glaive players to a lot of the other players here, they don't quite match up, which lead led me to the um, idea that Glaive are just better as a team. Right? Like no individual player for the most part was like so far and above and away another player on another team that they yeah. like hard carried the game and so you know my list really didn't have any glaive players on it because i'm thinking the best player at their role is not always on the best player on the or the best team in the league which is something that kind of uh the communities kind of fall into like we see this when lcs does their top three teams it's always like the star players or like the the best team in the league is getting the most spots and it's just it's not how it works right like the, the yeah. best players in an individual position should be getting these first seeds and so glaive great team but i think the sum of their parts is better than the individual and on the flip side of that coin doctor is yo boomers who mm -hmm. their players individually have incredible stats and they have just amazing talent individually but when you try to put all these really amazing players into one team sometimes it doesn't always work out heads can clash and ideas uh conflict but I do yeah. want to get you all's opinion on on the bot lane here. We haven't talked too much about Alistair and Trivia Boy. We're basically all bot laners, 380 carries and a support. <laughs> and talk about a bot lane that you'd be scared to play it against. You get this in solo queue, dodge, 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 dodge. No, get out, get out, go, go somewhere else. I'm not playing against these two. Yeah, this is easily the best uh, bottom duo uh, that you could imagine, that you could cook up in the league. Uh, if Alistair and Trivia Boy teamed up, then you'd be going back to... You really wouldn't need anybody else on your team, right? You could just have a bottom <laughs> lane versus five. And, and granted, I, I have my duos, right? I'm used to that, and I would love to see it from them. Uh, and as you guys being 80 carries, you can definitely respect how good Alistair is. Well, as a support, I mean, I could just give Trivia Boy all the praise. I've actually watched his games and been like, yeah, I should be doing that. Why am I not doing that when I'm playing? <laughs> uh, yeah, these guys are insane. Uh, you know, I wonder what would have happened if Trivia Boy uh, and, and Vark had stayed together throughout the season. You know, Vark was looking like a pretty hot quantity. He, he dropped out. Cruiser came in. Cruiser was looking pretty solid. I would say he's looking like a pretty good AD carry. I don't think he cracks into the top three, but... He, uh, he definitely maybe maybe competes with Blazing Bronze for that last spot, but maybe if he had a full split to develop with the rest of Glaive, I'm wondering if he could have made a run for Alistair's spot. Though Alistair, he is a bit above the rest of the league. Yeah, so this will be an interesting one because this is this is my my biggest spicy takeaway from this entire three teams here is that, you know, again, we talked about Glaive being a great team and, and having, you know, maybe a, a good team. I personally think they are all really good individual players. Um... And I, and I think some of their stats get overshadowed by the fact that they are all so good that they just win games very easily uh, and don't mm -hmm. have time to rack up kills and rack up stats. Uh, the the one player from from Glaive that did not make it on any of these teams is Vark. Uh, and so this is a, a really big point because clearly, you know, maybe a couple of us on the caster desk don't believe in him. And clearly part of the community doesn't also believe in Vark as well. So Whoa. there is a big point to prove, I would say, from Glaive and per, per specifically Vark as we go into these playoff matches after being what looks like a potential snub in these three teams. It's possibility. I mean, there's always 
uh, room to change our minds. Of course, the all pro teams won't change, but you can always get people's minds uh, to shift a little bit. And I, I want to get if you if you each had to choose uh, and we'll just go down the line um, because I'm a host and I don't have to do it myself. I'm not going to put the oh. community on a big target on my back, but we're going to go down the line. I want to know each of you if you could take one player and pull them out of this lineup and throw them anywhere else on the roster. Who would it be? Who do you think doesn't deserve to be here in the first pro team? Doctor, starting with you. Clonk. Uh, I mean, it's the one that sticks out the most to me. I mean, Jimmy, I, I have them quite highly as the second team. P Pause 2 I have on the, the number one team. Bot lane, they're just statistically you know great. I didn't have them on any team uh, at all. But, you know, they're they're great. But I think Clonk is definitely the weak point here. And we've talked about it in the past how, um, you know, they do kind of get overshadowed by a lot of these other top laners. Uh, we do have some nice fancy highlight reel plays from Clonk. Um, but I think, as, you know, Juicebox said, Giga's just better. It's just top diff in that sense. Okay, fair enough. Juicebox guy, same opinion or different? Uh... Uh, you know, DJ really did sway me with his argument. Uh, I don't. I still don't know if I would put Clonk above Giga, but I do think that it's insane. It is absolutely outrageous and completely wrong to put Jimmy above Baby Powder. Baby Powder uh, <laughs> is it, it's super good. He's super good. And while Jimmy is a great player, he's not Baby Powder. Uh, that's all I'm going to say on the matter. Baby Powder is just a, in my opinion, a better player. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I think for me, it, it would actually be Baby Powder or Jimmy simply because I actually think they are extremely close. I think Jimmy often doesn't show how good he is in a lot of the game twos. I think VBO is, is well known for, you know, throwing game twos and not really giving a, uh, a care. Uh, I think when Jimmy and they are trying, he's exceptionally good. I think they're very close and I think you could flip either one of them one too. I also think that Trivia Boy and Birdman are extremely close um in, in how good they are as well those are the two closest positions for me uh everyone else in these three spots pos clonk and alistair i think are, are pretty clearly uh team one for me i do Fair think enough. i do think vbo are going to take the title at the end of the season though i think Ooh. and i think a lot of it's going to be off the back of Ooh. jimmy so i'm gonna clip this and when it comes back around <laughs> and vbo have their second crown I'm just gonna remind y'all that y'all said it was. Uh, are they just gonna? Death. Are they gonna put that crown on top of the other crown? How's that gonna work? Are they gonna, <laughs> yeah, they gonna put, put that, that on crown? their logo? Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, VBO, do it. Take the inspiration. Doctor going one step above and beyond as he always does. But with that, thank you all so much for watching the pre-show and congratulations to the players who had made it onto your All Pro team. So with that, we're gonna head on over to the analyst desk <laughs> to break down what games we got going on tonight. See you there in about two seconds. <laughs>